This is No Filter. Yes, it is. It is No Filter. It's the space where people come into my studio and I probe them. It's not a euphemism, by the way. I get to look inside their head and we get to find out about the person behind the artist, all right? And I'm sure you'll agree, it's great when you got someone all made up looking sick and ma- making amazing music and making amazing art. But every now and again, we want to know about what makes them tick. My latest victim, actually, that's a joke. <laughs> my my latest <laughs> brother from another mother. The person on the hot seat tonight is Mr. H. Dummy. Welcome to the show, bro. Bobby, thank you very much, man. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. Good. Just marvelling at how good you look right now. Thank you, brother. <laughs> you know, you just, just you, you seem to reverse the ageing process. Trying to, man. Trying to, bro. Is it's it good. music? Is it something it, within the food your mother or your your, <laughs> your your wife cooks? What is it? Yeah, yeah, 100%, bro. It's the wife's cooking. Um, but yeah, Can no, I just point out, that's really rather sexist. I hope you cook as well, yeah? <laughs> I do. Underbred. <laughs> but yeah, no, do you know what? I'm in a good space right now, bro. And you know what I mean? I've just literally just controlling my diet, not drinking, just in the gym. And yeah, it's doing good so far, bro. And I'm okay. happy. Yeah, you know? well, it shows on you. And, <laughs> and uh, dear listener, when you see the pictures after after we've done this tonight, uh, you'll, you'll get exactly what I'm talking about. So, bro, I just want to, you know, jump straight into yes. one of my most resonant memories about you which is a really recent one and it's after I'd made my Bhangra documentary okay and I was at the London Mella last year and you were there your dad was there yep and your son was there yeah, yeah. and it was actually I mean just on a on a surface level a very beautiful moment three generations thank you yeah you know your dad was looking at you really proudly you were looking at Reese uh, yeah, really yeah. really really proudly yeah. he was looking at both of you like alright you know <laughs> what's going on what's going on um <laughs> I just want to know, um, is it a family business now? Like, is, is, is Reese being trained you by <laughs> you and your dad? <laughs> He's telling me what to do, man, because, like, even some projects I've done, which are, say, maybe even slower songs, he's like, yeah, dad, you know what, that's good, but it's a bit slow. Um, you need to do this so he's teaching he's telling me what to do wow. but um, yeah I think it's in the blood man it's just like crazy where uh, for me the buzz is just watching my dad live his dream again you know he's he's done his thing and they're still on the road and he's seeing his son on stage as well and by the same time he's seeing his grandson as well you know and hoping to see him on stage as well so wow. I mean, it's, it's a great it's a great feeling bro um, I just want to point out yes. that obviously your dad is yeah. is the iconic, the uh, the the legendary dummy from Hira. Yes, um, I, you know I just remember. I mean we've had this discussion before. <laughs> I remember buying Holle Holle, yeah. uh, you know, in Hounslow High Street on, on a twelve inch, and just going, who is this Punjabi animal on the front? You know, and what about animal? I, I mean that in the nicest possible yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. just looked like the very definition of unbridled male Punjabi energy you yeah, know I think, I think they created something very epic bro um, the bands from those days Hida Premi Alab Hole Hole the, the whole that whole sort of movement was unbelievable man and I think you guys the stories that you guys tell us daytime is this and that and watching like obviously your documentary that you've done it's amazing man so hats off to them for you know what I mean paving the way 100% yeah you know we like to think we're doing amazing stuff but they were the trailblazers they 100%. were they were the, the, the originals and still the best um, yes. so you, you know you proudly said you know we'll see if Reese goes into the family business yeah. but the business isn't always great is there anything you'd give Reese? In terms of a warning, if he decided at 18 or 21, you know what, I'm going into the family business. Yeah, I think, do you know what, it's, um, I think it's with any business, you know what I mean, you do have your ups and downs, but um, like for my, my background is actually computer science, you know what I mean, I'm a graduate in computer science, I was working for a few reputable firms before going into the music industry, but obviously my dad, he told me that, look, I want you to graduate first, I want you to graduate first, so you get that foundation, if you want to do music after that, I'm 100% backing you, but like you have to be prepared because you do get dark times yeah and i'll tell you one thing man, i'm gonna be open it's a no filter so it's you know what i mean i have had some dark times i have had some difficult times so like for me if he wants to do that great but then i would do my best to sort of just like okay just like don't get too excited sometimes or don't get wrapped up into things um, which you easily do you know it's inevitable you're gonna come across things but it's just um it's it's something that you know what i mean you're gonna face it at some stage but all you can do is just pray and just, you have to get through that, man. Look, we'll, we'll drill down yeah, into yeah, those yeah. dark times yes. in a minute. 
when I am interested in those, still looking at this, 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 you know, Russian doll vibe of yep. your dad, and then inside there's you, and inside you there, there's Reese. Yeah. Um, did your dad ever, when you first started out, almost not try and control you, yeah. but like any father would, try and go, you know what, you're too young to understand this. Let let me look after this right now. Did he, did he almost? tell you to move aside so he could fight the haters or deal with the business no uh, like you know what I mean I'm very I'm very fortunate the way um, sort of like it's you know what I mean ended up and how we've been going along for you know what I mean coming up to 11 years now and my dad's always said if you can do something do it 100% and he's always given me warnings like okay just you know what I mean just keep it cool with everyone you know what I mean because I've grown, I'm very fortunate to grow up around an era where the bands even when they see each other today's day and age they still like meet like they've met after a long time and it's great that's the kind of energy and but yeah he's always sort of given that guidance but he's never said do you know what do this do that he's always said do you know what I want you to learn as well you know he wanted I you want... to make your own mistakes 100% he, want, he wanted me to make my own mistakes but at the same time he was trying to sort of prevent things as well you know yeah. like business side of things like they didn't have no business side of things it wasn't he, he said on my doc yeah I, I, I think um, uh, it, it was him who actually said yeah we weren't businessmen it wasn't and yeah. and uh, there is no money yeah. essentially I mean there's money now for the guys yeah. but in terms of the cash they could have really made back in the day a lot of it filtered away from them. yeah 100% and they didn't they, they didn't get credit for that but again it's just so sort of refreshing to see that love and that sweetness that they still have after all that if you were to do that in today's day and age, it won't, it won't get that far, man. <laughs> it won't get that far, bro. So what about you then? Are yeah. you the same as your dad? Or could you end up being a lot more controlling, say, of Reese's career? Because, hmm. you, you know, if you know the score and your son's 21, 22, yeah. and you can see he's about to make the same mistakes yeah. and he's, he's an independent-minded person, yeah. surely you... Have I either got a control or let go completely? Yeah, hundred percent. You do have a you do have a control, but when, once a kid sort of, um, you know, what I mean, steps that he takes that step to be an adult or that responsibility, you have to let them do them thing their thing as well because otherwise it's going to be like you're controlling their career. And my mindset might be totally different to what Reese's will be in what ten years time, you know, because they're going to be growing up with the generation. It's like when when I started. And if my dad, my dad may have not seen what vision we had. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you have to let them go at a certain stage. But again, man, you still have to, obviously, the dad has to say, look, it's like me and my dad, we always have little, <laughs> you know what I mean, little digs like, dad's like, listen, do this. I'm like, no, dad, look, this is what we have to do, this and that. But the dad's like, no, H, you know what I mean? So you still have that. But I think that's obviously because of love, right? So... I love the fact that we've already decided Reese is having this career. You know? <laughs> oh no, we ah. just decided before anything. <laughs> he's not even like you know, at ten years he's old. Not even, yeah, he's not even a six yet. So, oh. but yeah, obviously, oh. when the time comes, then obviously we'll deal with that. So, um, um, I'm going to play Sotke Jawa in a minute. But okay. Be before we do that, um, just um, this is a question I'm sure you've been asked before. Yeah. But I, I want to get the tr not that you uh, lied before. I want to yeah. get the real unfiltered answer. How do people like you? continue being relevant yeah. for, for, for listeners musically and even your brand when essentially you're going home to your, your wife and kids yeah. every night because you know and I know there are other artists who hid the fact that they were married yeah, yeah, yeah. and had kids for years yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you've never done that so yeah. how have you been able to keep that balance I think do you know what it's just um, I don't think there's nothing to hide you know and um, I do keep my personal life separate from music to a certain extent but um, this is like, it's not even like I'm putting it up just for, because I want attention. It's just like, I want, you know what I mean? It's just me and I just want to be real, you know? And I think people can see that as well. And it's because the thing is that if you're going to hide it so much and you're, you're hiding it for a reason, there's no reason to hide it. And I'm proud of my family, you know? And I'm proud that I've got an amazing wife. I've got an ama I've got amazing children. And the thing is that you just, it's just me, man. I, I can't hide that stuff, you know? But... Yeah, if no, that answers your question. I, no, 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 you don't, you don't hide that stuff. <laughs> yeah. And you, you've always been, I don't mean this in a yeah, bad yeah. way, you've always been very simple. Yeah. And I really appreciated that about you. There, there's no strings attached, there's no shade coming from you. Yeah. What you see is what you get. Yeah. And all of us who 100%. work in the industry see that with you. But okay, you got your wife and you're proud of all that stuff. Yeah. Surely, though, you're a good looking guy. You're always going overseas, destination weddings. Surely people throw themselves at you. And literally kind of go, after a couple of drinks, hard, you're here. Charger. Don't be silly, Bobby. <laughs> what would they say that for? <laughs> now, nah, do you know what it is? I think it's, um, it's like when I'm at an event, 
my mindset is I get there, say, 40, 40, 45 minutes before. I go, do my thing, do my set, and then I'm off, you know? Okay. I do I do not hang around at events. It's very rare that I hang around at events because I would not take, I would not use my profession. I would not take advantage of that for, you know, my personal like pleasure or anything. So I've never looked at it that way. And, you know what I mean? So it's it's never sort of crossed my mind. But yeah, you do you do hit all sorts, you know what I mean? And But the thing is that on a professional level, you have to deal with that. You have to sort of handle that in a way where if you're going to throw yourself back at them, then obviously you're asking for trouble, you know? So, yeah. You know, I wish I'd listened to that <laughs> advice when I was young, footloose, fancy free and starting to DJ, but that's another no filter for another time. Um, we're going to play Sub Java. Just yes. tell me a bit about where you were mentally when when this era of your music was Yeah, coming. man, I was in an amazing place, you know. Um, Rishi just done a, an amazing job um, on this album and it's, um, it's unforgettable, man. I will never forget the journey that I went through in making this album because it was my dream to work with Rishi, you know. And I acted out my dreams, man. I used to stand in front of a mirror and I used to perform as if I'm on stage with the project, you know. Really? Because, yeah, because I was at uni and I used to go to the gigs and I'm not ashamed to say that because my thing is that I will say to people out there, act out your dreams because they do come true. And that's my personal experience. And next thing you know, I've met Rishi and I'm recording with him. I'm on the stage and you know what I mean? It's, it's amazing. And just writing this whole album, this particular song, was sitting with my dad on the dining table. I gave him the hook line, South Kijama. And dad wrote the song. He's having a little Bacardi, his favorite drink. And he's written the song within 20 minutes. I've gone to the studio the next day. And or the next day or even that night, it was just, it was... A ridiculous time I know that and that's it and the song was recorded so there was actually a slower version done which is not that upbeat and this version was done is that the Bacardi version that's the Bacardi version <laughs> and then this one the actual upbeat one was I know it was about a day or two days before we were going to Dubai for my first gig and I said to Rich that do you know what I want a song that's energetic bro so you know what I mean let's let's just if we can just put a Desi mix to this or something and this is the song that went out No filter with a man who you were just listening to, Satke Java, from H Dummy, who's with me right now. And uh, bro, that was eleven years ago. Yes, right? eleven years. <laughs> and um, you just—you got me kind of excited, like a schoolboy, over <laughs> you working with Rishi because I—I I knew you guys had a close relationship yeah, professionally. Yeah. Then I didn't realize you were actually channeling. The, the Rishi Rich project and wanting to be, you know, we've all done that thing singing with a yeah, hairbrush yeah. in our hand when we were kids. I didn't realise it was Rishi who you wanted to work with. Yeah, yeah, 100%, man. And do you know what? Those days, 2.9, I emailed him loads of times, bro, but I got no reply. So, um, but yeah, then obviously, I mean, Veronica at that time, um, I knew her through her husband. So they made it happen and my mate Dips, like they just introduced me to Dips him. Dips the, the uh, door player. Yeah, yeah and thing. they introduced me to him and that's it, we just clicked from there, man. And then before we started recording, we were actually on the road for about a year. He just took me out because he wanted me to absorb him partying yeah. and just get me to know what he's about. And okay, yeah, all good right. Good times. That's, so those are good times. Those <laughs> yeah. are good times. You alluded to there being dark times as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to find out about those dark times. Okay. Were those dark times personal dark times or were they business dark times? They were business going into personal because, you know what I mean, once obviously you're in a business and you're... You know what I mean? It's a knock-on effect, bro. You know what I mean? Once, let's like say, for example, musically and just the business side of it was going quite bad. You know what I mean? And if, and it personally affected me a lot. And what was happening was this, it was affecting my personal life as well because I just got married then and it was things which she didn't understand because, you know what I mean? She didn't sign up to this like mm. music industry, you know? Yeah. She signed up to me kind of thing, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, and I didn't... I, I, just have to, I just had to have that balance, you know? But yeah, man. So then just... just Tell me what those yeah. dark times were. You say yeah. it's business. Yeah. I get the fact yeah, that yeah. the whole thing of if things are going bad at work for yeah. anybody, yeah. You, you can't not help but bring it home. Yeah, yeah. What were the things that were going wrong at work? Okay. This, yeah, yeah. Remember, there's people listening yeah, yeah, yeah. who are willing themselves yeah. to get into the music yeah. industry. I just want to know if there's any potential pitfalls they should watch There is, for. man, and I've, I've not spoken about it. And now I will because, you know what I mean, I'm just going to be how it is. It's... At that time, we released the album. You know, I mean, it's great. I was on the road, and um, obviously, I mean, management. Then 
it was great. Everything's just going amazing well. Then obviously you had a few more businessmen getting involved. Um, not with my projects, you know what I mean, with other artists' projects, this and that. But during that time, I was busy on the road and I had completed my remix album um, for um, South Korea with the album. So there were people like Tiger Star that produced the track, um, DJ Vix, and then the Roach Killer one, we done a video for that one, Daily Media Akalagi, so many. And N Karma done a mix on that. And it was just, that was ready. And I also done a DVD documentary, H Army, the story so far. And for a Punjabi artist, no one's done that where it followed the life. And it was footage from me when I was six years old on stage with my dad. Wow. There was footage from when I was performing in Heathland School, my high school, wow. sixth form. There was footage of my first gig, my first interview at BBC Asian Network with, um, I think it was Adil Ray back in the day. And I mean, this is gold he, stuff yeah, for any and it was, artist. And it was interviews of people like my dad, um, Veronica, Rishi, myself, so many artists. And um, Niha was hosting that DVD. Yeah, yeah. And what happens so on getting to ready, so in a nutshell, getting ready to release that. And because the business side of things with all the people, the business heads went wrong, because I was the busiest on the road, I was the easiest target. So all of my projects were on a halt. So I just then released um, a track with PBN, then Nachi Di Vekana. That was taken off iTunes within 24 hours. My DVD project, my remix album, wasn't allowed to be released. I don't, oh, but can I just which, stop? You? Can I just stop? You? Yeah, I'm just trying to rewind because yeah, I want to yeah. get the events right. Yeah, you do all this stuff. Yeah. you put all this work yeah. in, and then you've got management and these other business yeah, people. Yeah. And just for listeners at yeah, home, yeah. you have got to understand it's never like you got one artist with one manager and they deal with everything. No. You get layers yeah. on top. Someone's going to deal with your bookings in India. Someone's going to deal with you. So. What happened? Who took that? What do you mean that it came off? Did someone physically stop? So basically, your- yeah, because what it was, the, the way I saw it and the way it was is that I was the busiest on the road at that time with Rishi, you know, and I was the easiest target. Stop my gigs. My gigs were stopped. I don't you know understand I mean? why they were stopping. Sorry, because, am I missing because something? Because say, for example, now you got, say you say you got a hierarchy of, say, three people. Say I'm getting paid. Obviously, the management will get um, a split. This and that. So to stop that, it was a case where even the millers across the UK, they were getting emails from a particular individual that he had signed up to me, which I wasn't. Are you saying that there were two managers, two different camps fighting over who owned you? Yeah. Okay. So, but like, I don't know how it happened. Signatures, I didn't sign nothing. So basically, you know, I mean, I'm gonna break it down. I didn't sign nothing. But then there were there were lawyers' letters saying that I signed a document. And I'm not allowed to release for how many years? Um, you know, I mean, my stuff. If I perform at any events, Mele were getting emails saying that if you have a H army on your stage, you will get sued. So I was taken off about say 10, 15 Mele. I would say for the whole year, and it was a point where I had to take control of my own stuff. And I'll be honest, Bobby, man, I took my own bookings for a while as well, which no one knows. But I had to do that because otherwise, there would be no more H army. Yeah. And I was, I was proud of what I've done. You know, what I mean, I've worked hard and. Um, I, I value that. So it was, it was it was a point where it was, I felt that, you know what, everyone just backed off there. Yeah. And I was left by myself. You so, know? so all right, I get exactly what yeah. happened, yeah. which is so unfair. Yeah. Because that's your bread and butter. Yeah. To use an old phrase, people yeah. took food off your table. Yeah, yeah, and 100%. Out, you know, and out of your mouth. Yeah. Um, so then weren't you afraid... Because I can imagine getting lawyers' letters. Yeah. If you're not someone who's used to lawyers' letters, yeah. they give you anxiety for, yeah. for months. Um, weren't you afraid if you started looking after your own bookings that these people would still come for you? Yeah, do you know what it was? The thing is that I knew I haven't done nothing wrong. And I knew I haven't, like, sort of... I haven't done nothing bad to no one, you know? And the thing is that with me, it got to a point and I confronted this individual, which I don't want to say no names, but this was, was an ex-manager, right? He was Ish. he was involved, like as in maybe the investing part or however it was. But it got to a point where I took things in my own hand, you know. And I told him, I said, "Listen, like you're actually messing with my livelihood now. You're messing with like you know what I mean. I'm potentially have kids, and this ain't right, bro. You know." I said, and I gave him ultimatum, you know. And it was a case of I just. I felt suffocated, you know, and yeah. the anxiety, which only I knew how to deal with it, you know, and it's, you can't talk about it, whatever. What can you do? You know, you get angry, um, but you have to think about, okay, cool, people, you're still H-Star me. People look at you. If you make a scene about it, 
you're going to look like a, you know what I mean? But that so, feels like prison, bro. It does, yeah. But it's, I, I don't know how I got through those few years. You know, I got through it, God's blessings. But it was a case where, like, people don't know I was taking care of my own bookings. I was doing my own stuff, my own contracts. There were some times where I had to drive to gigs by myself. And I'm not afraid to say that, bro, because yeah. I'm very passionate about what I do. But um, in the end, man, the truth prevails, you know? And so, yeah, it was like, it was, and that's why people say, hey, you ain't released nothing. What answer could I give? that okay white released i'm not going to say the story am i so yeah. i'm just like yeah do you know what i've been busy which i have been busy on the gig circuit you know and i wasn't scared of taking gigs or saying that yeah they're going to come for me whatever because i ain't done that wrong so but now yeah still still going man yeah no of course <laughs> so then one last thing to add on top of this yeah, right yeah. and that is um there are people right now yeah uh, who have management going you know what you're sick you've been playlisted on the asian yeah, network yeah. for example i want to manage you is there any simple manifesto that you can give new and emerging artists yeah I'll just make sure you don't fall because yeah. can I just say another thing yeah yeah with your dad yeah being your dad I'm sorry but like for me it feels like how could this happen he when did, you've he, got not, your not even he saw it coming bro wow. that's how bad it was I'm not blaming yeah, him I'm yeah, just no, like but it was that bad that not even he saw it coming and because at that time, bro, it was like I was gigging. I was doing sometimes four or five gigs a week and sometimes two, three gigs a night, you yeah. know? And it was for me, it wasn't even about, okay, cool, do you know what? Has that money hit my account? I'll be honest, I swear to God, that it wasn't even about has that money hit my account. For me, it was a buzz. I never used to drink then either. So yeah. if I was going out partying, it's a different story. I never touched alcohol. Yeah. First three years of my career, I didn't touch it, you know? And But it was a case where my dad didn't even see it coming. You know, yeah, and I can't even I can't even imagine what he felt at that time. Yeah, but he was obviously just obviously being clever because he didn't want to make a sort of rational decision as well to do something and stuff like that. But it's just something that I had to go through, bro, and yeah. it's made me a stronger person. But I'll tell you one thing: it was it was tough, man. It was tough. But um, yeah, I'm glad to be out on the other end now, man. <laughs> you are out on the other end. You're absolutely killing it. Your dad's it's still good, making good, music. Man. You're yeah. making music. We've already decided Reese is making music. Oh no, exactly. <laughs> I think one thing I've learned from the last bit we were talking about is never trust a businessman. <laughs> is what it is, man. Yeah. Okay. Well, look. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something with yes. you now. This is our last little section uh, between you and me on this no filter tonight. And what we usually do is we we you know no filters are always about being uncensored, and we, it always gets a bit deep and heavy. Yeah. But with you, because you do honestly, I'm I'm sure you've heard this. You give off such good energy so much of the time. Thank you, bro. Um, it's something everyone I know in the industry has always mentioned um, about you when I've talked to them. Um, I kind of need a, a H-Dummy self-help book, all right? <laughs> so, so um, and, and I'm sure it's actually really simple advice, but we still want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Yeah. What has kept you smiling all these years? Yeah. And what's kept you looking so young? And most of all, what's kept you sane? Believing, bro. I've never stopped believing. Um, I've always, you know I mean, tried to keep the most positive people around me and people that are going to give me good advice and not saying that this person's this, this person's that. I don't like talking about people. Uh, you know what I mean? If someone's around me talking about bad mouthing someone else and to their face they're going to be, oh yeah, what's happening, bro? I, I can't do that, you know? Yeah. Um, I'd rather say to someone that, look, do you know what? That's cool. I mean, let's part ways. But yeah, that's it, man. Just keep just keep believing, bro. And I don't, I'm, I'm still hungry, bro. Like now, I'm back at this. I was trying to, like people were asking, hey, man, when you release music, I said, when I find my hunger again, that's when I'm gonna start releasing. And I'm hungry now, man. I'm hungry to work with, um, you know what I mean, so many people, you know what I mean, collaborate, new producers, um, old producers. It's just, I'm at that stage where I just wanna do what I need to do. And what does that hunger mean for us yeah. musically? Because, you know, falling, yeah. completely different to everything else yes. you, you, you'd released before, yeah. you know, your last single. Does that hunger mean you're gonna be doing gangster Punjabi rap, rap like Sidhu Musella. <laughs> you're gonna be doing, you know, like Desi Indo Pakistani rap music. I, I'm just yeah. trying to kind of I, find out. Do you know what? Falling was a sort of a jump for me because I've never sang in English, and that's the I think that's the most amount of sang. And I was sort of, you know, what I mean, hesitating because I was in studio. I recorded this at Mumsy's place, and 
I'm thinking, yo, Mamzi can sing English. He must be looking at me thinking, yar, ki kari yanda, tu chapa ga. So, and but he's encouraging me. He's like, no, hey, just try it, you know, just do, just do it. And you need that push from someone, you know. And thanks to, you know, what I mean, it was like Mamzi and his his whole team that said, hey, it's just come in. And sometimes, you know what, you need someone to just sort of drag it, drag you out your seat and say, you know what. Come on, man! Believe in yourself, bro. So it, it's great, man. And thinky, like now, I'm just willing to try sort of anything. Rap music, I like rap music, but I think I don't think I will sort of start rapping because start you know spitting I mean? bars. Sindhu's killing it right now, man. So <laughs> uh, you know, what I mean, I'm a massive fan of him and people that are doing the thing, you know. Um, but I think, yeah, I'm just gonna just dive into what I want to do, man. I just want to enjoy music, maybe desi music or more commercial pop. I just want to get in the studio, and once you're in that element of recording, then you don't know what's going to come out, you know. Well, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you, Bobby. Um, I think we should start. I think we should finish how yeah. we started off. Yes. And we're going to play a track uh, done by a PBN. Okay. Uh, and it's you and your dad. Just tell us a bit about this tune. Yeah, man. Well, I ain't heard this song for a long time, people of the Diary. So, uh, yeah, this song was. Well, do you know what this song? The lyrics is exactly. The relationship between me and my dad, you know, um, the great Jandul Litranwaraji from Birmingham who wrote this song, and every single line from the chorus to the verses is a relationship between a father and son. I'm feeling and, emotional, you're, you know me, I mean? you're making me feel emotional. Man. And th that's what it is, man. And PBN just, you know, what I mean, done his thing on this, and yeah, be a part of the yari. All right, let's do it. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Asian Network.